performance of the week. Nick Kyrgios winning his first World Tour title. It came in Marseille against Marin Cilic. It's a big moment for the 20-year-old Aussie. And to tell us how big, we say good evening, Wally Masur. How significant, Wal? Yeah, it's pretty big, isn't it? Uh, first ATP title uh, and the calibre of the field. It's a prestigious event, uh, Marseille. It's been around for a while and uh, it's a big focus of the indoor season straight after the Australian Open. Um, to beat the guys that he beat... And he, he didn't scrap those wins. He manhandled some of those guys. We're talking about Chilic, 12 in the world, former Grand Slam champion, of course, Gasquet at 10 and Burdich at 8. These are significant wins. You, you back that on to Vavrinka, the guy he beat in Montreal, Federer he beat in Madrid, and he's beaten Nadal at Wimbledon. It's pretty significant for a 20-year-old, these wins. He didn't drop a set during this tournament, didn't drop a service game. Through your expert eyes, did he take his game to a new level? He seemed very calm, didn't he? Um, he was almost nonchalant when he accepted the trophy, and that's probably not quite how we saw Nick uh, during the Australian Open, where he seemed more uh, combative and uh, emotional. And you know, he's obviously enjoys Marseille. He was calm, and he just played as though he knew he was going to win. And I guess indoors, Nick has an incredibly good serve. It's, it's, it's as good a serve as going around. And I guess indoors with no variables, he got in a groove on the serve. And really, that was the, the cornerstone of his win. He, the guys could barely put any pressure on his serve. He's very quick between points. So he's getting through those games really quickly. So the guys must have blinked and it's like, oh, I'm under pressure again on my own serve. So he kind of kept that momentum going throughout the course of the week. And it'll be interesting to see what this win does for him going forward because, as you said, I mean, it's a significant moment in any young player's career. We all know what he's capable of. He got to the final of Estoril last year on the clay. So it's pretty interesting for Nick because he can be damaging at any time of the year on any surface. And that is how you have a pretty good career. You mentioned he served 16 aces in the final, 72 for the tournament. So he seems to be over that injury. I want to take you further down the line and said, where does he go to from here? Dubai is his next stop. What are your predictions for Nick now over the next six to 12 months? Six to 12 months. Uh, well, I think at the end of this week, he's ranked around 30. Um, but the way that he played, it's top 10 tennis of that. You can't dispute that. So if he can sustain that sort of form for six months, he'll be he'll be nudging the top 10. If he can sustain it for 12 months, he'll be inside the top 10. And tell us why that's so important when it comes to the big tournament. Some well, people guess, might not understand I that. guess staying healthy, and he's got to produce that sort of form in Masters Series and Grand Slam tournaments. That's where the big points are. Um, and he can, and he has. Um, but I think for Nick, staying healthy is probably the big key because he plays a very dynamic game and he's still young. I would suggest that Nick's only just stopped growing. So I, I always said his best tennis is probably going to come around that 23, 24 mark. We'll start to see it. But I think the really interesting thing about Nick Kyrgios is when, when the big four go, when those established players who've been around for a decade go, I look at Nishikori, I look at someone like a Raonic, I wouldn't discount Grigor Dimitrov. Who's going to take up the mantle in the top five? Who's going to be the best player in the world? He's in the mix, isn't he? Mm. He's right yeah. there. That's I mean, I, I, that's a big call. So, but... long, so long while as he gets his total picture right and the on-court slash off-court behaviour has still been a question mark, but here it was smooth sailing. I love the way he finished by, in French, telling the crowd, I love cheese. Don't Is he all? starting to get it? Yes, we do. Yeah, well, <laughs> look, I guess it's, it's a brick in the wall, isn't it? It's another brick in the wall. He now has to get on a plane and fly to Dubai, completely different tournament, completely different conditions. His motivation will have to be just as good and he'll have to deal with all the intangibles of a new event. And this is what the top players do so well. They back it up week after week. So, yeah, it's another experience for him to come off a tournament victory. So will the confidence carry him through, or will he find it tough to reset and start it all over again? We'll learn a bit more about him. But, look, yes, he, he can polarise opinion, but, wow, has he got game. I mean, the way that he beat those guys... Um, I was talking to John Fitzgerald recently about this guy. You, you know, we've been involved in tennis for the last 30 years. You do not see guys like this come along very often. A landmark moment for Nick Kyrgios. You, I and all of Australia hopes it's onwards and upwards. Well, in a great to chat. We do all love cheese, especially with a nice glass of red or donations Absolutely. gratefully received.